Scorecards are metric cards to represent your KPIs. Usually, you want to have more than one, but I suggest you include no more than 10 on one page to make sure you're not acquiring too much data from one data source at a time. I'm going to copy these scorecards with Ctrl C and paste them with Ctrl V. Now there are three scorecards. I want these to present different values, so I just click on the first one, and now that it is selected, you can see a blue rectangle around it. Then I can edit it from the right-hand side menu. On the top of the right-hand side menu, there are two tabs, Setup and Style. Setup is where you can configure the data presented, and in Style, you can change how the element looks visually. At the top of the Setup tab, there is a data source associated with this selected element. Now, if I click on it, I can change the data source for the scorecard. I can select any data source that is added to this report or any reusable data source. I'll continue using a Facebook Ads data source. Below the data source, you can select the metrics and dimensions. Because I've selected the scorecard, I can only see the metrics option. Let's select impressions as a metric for this scorecard. The easiest way to do this is to click the selected metrics and the menu will open beneath it. I can now search for the metric I want to use. I'll select the second scorecard and change the metric from this dropdown to clicks. I want to use CTR as a metric for the third scorecard. The name of this metric is quite long, so I need to shorten it to make it more readable. I can do so by clicking on a pen icon and rename the metric just to have CTR percentage on it. Now I have three KPIs on top as scorecards. I can select all of them, and because they are the same element type, I can apply changes to all of them at once using the right-hand side menu. For example, I can change the style or set the comparison date range in one go from the calendar view. I'll select previous year as a comparison date range for all three elements. I can select the color of the upwards, downwards arrow in the styling section. Sometimes, the downwards arrow can be colored green and not red, for example, if CPC goes down, as it is a positive change. You can select comparison colors for individual cards and set the downwards arrow to be green and the upwards arrow to be red. In my case, the default colors are fine, so I'll keep them as they are now. I'm now going to select these two cards with impressions and clicks and select the Compact Numbers option from the Style tab. You can also change the text alignment. For example, you can center the text. You can also change the background and border. I'm not going to touch the color, but I do want to make the element corners a bit rounded. If you want to have a border, you can also add it from here. Now, my CTR cards look a little bit different. I can copy one of these two cards, then select the CTR card and choose the Pay Special option from the top menu. This will only apply the style to this card. If your cards are not aligned, you'd need to select all the cards, then go to Arrange menu on the top, select Align Vertically, then Top, and then Distribute horizontally. Now that scorecards are all done, let's go to the time series chart. Let's select the time series chart and take a look at the setup for this element. I have a data source associated with it, and I'll keep it as it is. As for the dimensions, I definitely want to keep the date on the x-axis, as it is a time series, and I can select impressions and CTR as metrics. I'm going to rename the CTR field again, as I did with the scorecards. I can see the impressions, but the CTR line looks flat now. 
And that is because we're trying to visualize both impressions and CTR on the same axis. I need to go to the Styling tab to fix this. In the Styling tab, you can see different options for changing the style of this element. Here it says Series 1, and this means the first series of the graph. In our example, this is the number of impressions. The setting indicates that I'm using a line, but I can change it to a bar form here. I can also change the color of this individual element if I want to. I usually change all my colors from theme and layout section so that I always only use specific colors in a certain set order. I can also choose to show data labels. I'll keep the CTR as a line format and then change the axis to be on the right. Now this time series chart is much more readable. Let's take a look at configuring a bar chart. I want to break the metric down by campaigns using breakdown dimension. So I'm going to select the campaign name here. And then I want to see the campaigns that have the most clicks. Therefore, for the metrics, I'm going to select link clicks. Because our campaign names are a bit long, I need to adjust this axis to show the full campaign names. If you see an empty space like this, it would suggest that maybe you need to give more space for the campaign name. You can break the metrics down by one or multiple dimensions using a table chart. For dimensions, I'm going to select campaign name, ad set name, and for metrics, let's go with impressions, link clicks, and CTR percentage. You can set the default sorting by impressions, for example. You can then also sort the table by clicking the headline of the column. Say you want to sort it by clicks. Let's revert this back to default by clicking the spend arrow on the left-hand side top corner. For table visualizations, there is an option to highlight metrics columns. On the Style tab, when you scroll down, you can see the metric settings. The column one would mean the first metric column, which in this case is impressions. From this dropdown, you can see that there are three different kinds of tables, bar, heat map, and number. When I click on one, I can see that all the columns actually have changed to show the bar. I can add the number there as well. If you select this heat map, I can see that all values in this column have now a heat map associated with them. The number selection is the default one with no extra visualization. You can select each column to select different kinds of styling. Let's set our impressions and clicks metrics to bars and then the CTR percentage column to heat map. Now that you know how to add metrics and dimensions to table and change the table style,